a great honor for me to be speaking before an audience of experts. I apologize for this. I, I made this talk which I gave in Nankai last week and um, so I decided to do this very late and I uh, want you to know that I, that's the reason it's, it says up there that it's uh, a talk I gave in Nankai. And again, my usual uh, collaborators in this field uh, Martin Bendersky, Fred Cohen and Sam Gitler. Now this is represents work which is up on the web but we have a very recent application of this. Now notice that it says <laughs> I love windows right now. Um, notice that it says notice that it says product structure in so we do not compute product structure of but we are working on that and, and in fact we have you know uh, a, a paper that's in preparation now that will discuss the cohomology of general polyhedral products and while I was in Nankai I did encounter the work of Shi Bing Zheng who has a spectral sequence computing or computing the algebra structure but we don't really understand that paper so I can't really judge but we're in discussions with him and he has this very very complicated uh, preprint that I will refer to but but this uh, the cohomology of these things is a subject of uh, very active investigation at the minute as as we speak okay but even though we do not compute the product structure of from this point of view, we get a very good conceptual understanding of uh, product structure in a variety of special cases, one of which is a quite an important special case. So I hope you'll find it interesting. Now, unfortunately, to make the constructions I need in this paper in, for, to, to develop this work, I'll need many superscripts and subscripts, which the most important of which will, I'll put on the board, but I hope that the profusion of superscripts and subscripts will not distract you from, from, uh, uh, from my talk. It's really a very trivial idea, very trivial, right? Okay, so uh, I think I start here just with a, a basic review uh, that I, most of which I mentioned um, in my last, my last talk. Um, so again, for the, those of you who weren't here, I'm going to be discussing a functor of two variables, uh, one of which is a simplicial complex. Again, the numbers n and m are fixed. m is the number of vertices of k, n minus 1 is the dimension. I have a family of CW pairs, and in this talk, the base point, it's very important, right? Not in my last talk, but in this talk. And we associate a topological space which we call the polyhedral product. It's a, it's a natural subspace of, of the product. And it's defined, you're all familiar with the definition, but I need to reiterate the definition because I'm going to change it slightly. So it's the natural subspace given by a union of subspaces of the product where the Cartesian product is made from Xi's and Ai's based on the vertices which are in the, uh, the simplex sigma or not. So this is something that, uh, that you're all very familiar with. And there's a simple example which I mentioned last time. The four disk is an example of a polyhedral product and I reiterate the notation and I notice that we have the pleasure of Sue Young in the audience who is proposing that we have a meeting at your meeting to discuss notation, right? It's his idea. But our rule is that if the spaces involved are um, if the spaces involved are D2 S1, then it's a moment angle complex. I should use your rater. If the spaces are some some bigger disks or different disks. then it's a generalized moment angle complex. Uh, the D1S0 is a real moment angle complex. And everything else is a polyhedral product. I hope this is, this is our notation 
and uh, I think we can make a strong case because this word, as I said last time, was invented by the inventor of the word orbifold. So it has a fine pedigree. And a variety of, I mentioned these applications last time, so the toric varieties are related to D, the, the pair being D2S1 and complements of court. Now this is important for my talk. This case here, if, if it's C and C star, then it's a complex coordinate arrangement, co complements of coordinate arrangements, and by taking different things different from C and C star, you can get other, other arrangements, subspace arrangements, which aren't coordinate. Um, but this is important for my talk today, so I would like you to keep this one in mind, C and C star. Now the people the people who work on arrangements, complements of arrangements, are studying moment angle complexes, so we need to be familiar with their work. And here, these sorts of cases are related to combinatorics. And uh, D1S0 is small covers, and then there are applications that Fred's involved in. Here, group theory, monomial ideal rings, we have a paper which realizes every monomial ideal ring with uh, related spaces. And here I've added a, 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 another way. See, I've become more familiar uh, in recent weeks with the important work of, uh, of Tomo, which you know, was on my desktop. So he's now you have in the Parthenon of, uh, <laughs> of people working on this subject. OK. And now I wish to discuss a related construction and this construction is called the smash polyhedral product. And it's exactly the same as the polyhedral product, except smash products are replaced, replace, replace Cartesian products. Smash product is the uh, smash product. If I have uh, A smash B, it is A cross B modulo the base point, the base point is very important. So you pinch out the axes. Smash product. Homotopy theory construction. And so you make exactly the same thing, but we put a hat, we put a hat on it if it's the smash product. Here's an example. Uh, if I take two disjoint points, two disjoint points, so my simplicial complex is, is here. And now M, M in this example is 2, N equals 1. So I need two spaces, and here X1, A1 is, I think I chose uh, D3, S2 and x2a2, it's uh, d2s1. Now let's see what this is. Well, these are the, the, um, these are the uh, parts of the co-limit that are relevant here, one corresponding to the one vertex and the other to the other vertex. And now by definition, this is a union. Now, s2 smash s1, it's s3. And D3 smash S1, that's the suspension of D3. It's homotopy equivalent to D4. So this is homotopy equivalent to D4 union D4 along S3. So this is S4 back again, but in a very different way, a, a very different way. This is, this is a much better behaved object than the polyhedral product. So in many ways, in many ways is is better behaved yeah that's uh, a actually you could construct a homeomorphism yeah, that's homeomorphic yeah in fact, 
I didn't, if I tell you this, I'm going to run out of time. If I tell you this, I'm going to run out of time. But I'll, I'll tell you a very interesting fact. Okay, a very interesting fact. If you have a simplicial complex, any simplicial complex, any simplicial complex, then, so M, I think it's M vertices, then there is, there is a very natural model for, now I think it's a suspension M plus 2, but I'm not quite sure about that. Suspension M plus 2, by simplicial complex here, I mean the realization, the topological realization of the simplicial complex. Inside an M fold smash product of two disks. And so I was giving a talk many years ago, and I mentioned in my talk that um, this was a homotopy equivalence, this natural model was homotopy equivalent to a suspension of the simplicial complex and the topologist David Stone proved that it was a homeomorphism. I, I challenged him, I said I think this is a homeomorphism and he went away and he proved there was a homeomorphism and, and so he linearized the smash product which I thought was a wonderful piece of work. See if you have two points so two points you have to suspend three times. So this is S3, right? This is S3. And here is the natural model. The natural model is the usual one. But in fact, it's a homeomorphism in the general case. If you suspend you suspend K, this K, K is two points. You get the three sphere, and this is contained in. That's the natural model of the simplicial complex inside a smash product of two disks, right? And the combinat to the best of my knowledge, the combinatorial theorists I asked, they did not know that that's that's a that's a theorem. Huh? Very interesting. It's a linearization. I aren't I I mentioned that because you asked me about homotopy equivalence and homeomorphism. So we could see, we proved that it's a homotopy equivalence, but David Stone, he proved this a homeomorphism. It's in our, mentioned in our paper, one of our papers. So it's an example, right? Okay, now I have to introduce notation. I apologize for the notation, but without the notation I cannot say anything. So, so introduce some notation. So M as usual is just the uh, string of integers and I is a sub increasing subsequence which I'll think of as a simplex and I'm given a collection of based, based CW complexes so if you give me this as I, then I make these spaces. Well, Y M is just the Cartesian product. Y upper I is the Cartesian product of the Ys which are in I. And Y I hat is the smash product of the ones which are, which are in I. This is first part of my notation. Okay, so unfortunately I need more notation, unfortunately. So, and I will show you an example. I'll put this notation, I'll show you an example. I have a simplicial complex then, and you give me an I. I determines what we call a full subcomplex. So the full subcomplex is the intersection of K with the subsimplex I. So, so, so here, here is a simplicial complex. So if I take I to be equal to 1, 3, then the full subcomplex KI, it's the intersection of the simplex 1, 3. You intersect the blue with the, with the 
the k and you get that it is just two points. See? Full subcomplex. Now, if you give me a full subcomplex, I, I define a, a yi which will depend on, the, on, on sigma. You give me a full subcomplex, uh, sorry, you give me an i and you give me a simplicial complex and you give me a simplex, then I make this definition, right? yi, it's going to be a product here and it will be it will be the usual thing if this is in not in sigma but in sigma intersect i right it's the difference use the difference if if it's in sigma intersect i so the normal definition would not have that see so it would just be in sigma right but sigma intersect i so this product this partial product we indicate with this symbol here so that's first notation um, y sorry y i sigma intersect i okay k is a cardinality of uh, no, I, K has usually has M vertices. There are no, no K. Sorry, small K. Small K. Yes. K yeah, you kill, small K is the cardinality of I. In in, I think in this whole talk, I will be I one, I two, I K. Fixed. Right. M is fixed. Y upper I. Y upper I. Of sigma intersect I. What is Y upper I? I is well, you give me an you give me M. Here is a sequence of M things. I is a subset of this. Okay, now it's an increasing sequence. So how do I denote I, right? I have no way of denoting I other than to write I equals this. Y of the I. Yes, what that's so. Okay. I, I has K things in it. Right. So, fact number one Y upper I is going to be a product of K things. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, that's determined by I. I determines K, as Tomo points out, right? Okay. So now it is going to be this product. Now I have to say what these are, right? And it's the same usual thing. It is the xij, there is an xij, there is an x for each one of these, for each one of these, there is an x. So x, if I, ij is in this intersection, and it's a if not. You're saying it's why i, parenthesis sigma. Intersect i, yes. So it, this is a func it depends on two things. It depends on i, it depends so on sigma. This is sort of a functor which sends this subset of this I mean, sigma into certain, sub certain words. Right? Well, that's right. It sends sigma and i to a topological space. A product, a Cartesian product. It sends it to a Cartesian product. this Cartesian product. Right? We'll give an example. I will give an example now, I hope. Now, now, before I have to say what the associated polyhedral products are. You see, if this I was not here, then everything would be clear, right? But now there is an I and I need to be specific about that. So this is going to be a co-limit and Instead of living inside the Cartesian product x to the m, it lives in the Cartesian product x to the i. Right? It's, so it's a natural subspace of this, and it's the union of all sigma in k of these yi's. What i is fixed. Okay? i is fixed. So let me just put that 
in fact, let me just put that here. I'll put some definitions I want to say. So Z hat K, oh sorry, Z without the hat, K sub I. Now, by the way, it's X A sub I. Th see, this has only I vertices, so I have to restrict X A to X A sub I. So X A sub I is the collection X I one a i1, x i k, a i k. Everything here is by restriction. By restriction. So it's by restriction. It's exactly, if you look here, this is the same definition as for an ordinary polyhedral product. It's a restriction of an ordinary poly polyhedral product, a restriction. And similarly, you do the smash is the same same thing smash products okay here is my example now so here is here we have an example so in this example m is 3 and K is going to be this simplicial complex. One, two, three. So this is K. Three vertices. And I'm going to take now, I is a subset of M. So I is going to be a subset of M. And in this example, I will be uh, one, three. So now let us look, you know, what is K K sub i, well K sub i, right? So I take one three and I intersect. I take the intersection, so K i, it's two points, one, three. So this is K i, K sub i, okay? So now I must make a sigma intersect i. So there are two maximum simplices, sigma 1, sigma 2, right? So sigma 1 intersect i, sigma 1 intersect i is 1, 2 intersect i, which is just 1. So this is a sigma 1 intersect i. And this, it's sigma 2 intersect i. And so, just two, so k sub i is those two points, as, just as I said. In this example. So now, corresponding to each, there are two sigma intersect i, sig, sigma 1 intersect i, sigma 2 intersect i. Y i of sigma 1 intersect i, well, 1 is in there, is in sigma intersect i, so it's x1. 3 is not in sigma intersect i, so it's a3. It's in this product here. x i1 cross x i2. And y i of sigma 2 intersect i is just 3. 1 is not in there, so it's a1. 3 is in there, it's x3. Again, it's in here. So these are the spaces in this example and when I combine them, when I combine them I get this ZKI is the top co-limit and the smash is beneath it. Okay, so we have these definitions straight. Right, okay. Okay. This is a uh, this is a functor, yes. So I could choose i and then create a ki and this uh, z of ki. Yeah. Well, if you just if you just fix i, yeah, you're not doing anything new. Yeah, but is it? Kind of we want to vary vary these things. So That's the point. Why why is the sort of functor sending collection of i and sigma into a certain cross space? Yeah. If i is fixed. 
if i is fixed we are not doing anything new but we are looking at i in the context of m we are k, k i is a sub sub complex sub simplicial complex of k yes and then this d of k i this is a completely different gadget see k i is a different size it's a different size from k so it's not going to be it's it's going to be not sitting naturally it will sit naturally in the product of all the x's but then, so it, it will be like a projection there is there is a project from z k to z k i by forgetting the vertices you didn't I, I, i'm tempted to agree to that but I, I we will see that we will see that now yes in fact that is the critical point okay, okay. Yes. In case of I is a sufficient complex. It is. Right? And you have X, XA. So this is equal to the union of YI sigma I. That's right. That's, that's, a, that's a sort of simple theorem, is it? No, that's it's just the definition. But, but you can also construct the Z of momentary complex of XA, K, XA. Yeah. Are they saying this, this one? Or? Well, I'm going to be projecting to it. Yet, yet, that's what I said, if everything is fixed, if I don't know about the bigger simplicial complex, there's nothing new. But the important thing is this is living in the context of the bigger gadget. That's the whole point. I'm about to get to that, exactly that point, right? Now, there is a stable decomposition if I take an ordinary polyhedral product and I suspend it once, it splits into a wedge of these z hat ki's that's the fundamental decomposition theorem now of course we know that a suspension has no products right a suspension has no products but paradoxically from the stable splitting we will get the product structure right that's a parad that's paradoxical and and i'll tell you something very surprising about something you know already so so the stable splitting stable splitting of z k x a implies its product structure Stable splitting implies the product structure. And, and, and now, but in... What is stable splitting? It, that a, a space splits stably if when you suspend it, it breaks into simpler pieces. The most famous one, of course, is that the suspension of the Cartesian product A cross B this is homotopy equivalent to the suspension of A. This is why the base points are so, these are pointed, pointed spaces. Wedge, the suspension of B, wedge, the suspension of A smash B. Now what I'm claiming, right, what I'm claiming here is this splitting, this side here, right, this side, will imply the ring structure of H star of A cross B. That's a surprising thing. This side will imply the ring structure according to what I'm doing. Now that's a very, for those of us who are just starting to learn homotopy theory, that's a very shocking result, right? That's just, this, is, this is the whole point. Okay. So, let's continue on this goal. Now, how am I going to do this? How does that do this? How does it do this, right? Well, the product structure in here is determined by the diagonal map. The diagonal map gives the product structure in cohomology. So what we are going to do is we are going to understand 
the diagonal map here by making the diagonal map over here. That's what we're going to do. Right? What is, what is the diagonal map? The diagonal map is the... Well, you're going to see, it's exactly what you're going to see on the next slide, right? Okay, now unfortunately there's... So, this, not, not this slide, I apologize. The purpose of this slide is to show you that for certain polyhedral products, the ring structure of the cohomology is easy. And in fact, we have a generalization of this. And that is the case if the AI are contractible. If the AI are contractible, and indeed there's a paper of Wang and Zheng that extends our results so that it, it can work out the ring structure if AI into XI is null. But in that case, that simple case, the cohomology of the polyhedral product with field coefficients, or in a context where there's a strong form of the Kunath theorem, it looks exactly like the cohomology of the Stanley of, of the Davis Yanuskevich space, where you take the tensor product of the cohomology of all the X's and you mod out by Stanley Reisner ideal. It's exactly the same answer. And in fact, this cohomology result comes from a split cofibration, which is a consequence of our splitting theorem. So this is this this is a very strong result in that case. You can see the answer. It looks ex exactly like the Stanley Reisner ring, right? So you take poly in the Stanley Reisner case, polynomial algebra, mod the Stanley Reisner ideal, right? Now, here is what is an interesting fact. This has a generalization to the case where this is on to. It has the same answer, right? It's, uh, this is, we have not put this up on the web, it's not finished yet, but if this map is on to, then the cohomology of the, of the uh, moment angle of the polyhedral product, right, it's isomorphic to, now I'm working over a field, sorry, over a field, say FP for example, right, and there there is a splitting, so I think of the cohomology of XI as being isomorphic to, the cohomology of AI sum with the cohomology of XI mod AI. Well, I want to think of this as a natural subgroup of that. Now, in that context, I get this. This is the same tensor product of the H star XIs. And modulo a Stanley Reisner ideal but this time the ideal is in the tensor product of these things. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, all right. Now, of course, if A is contractible, this is exactly the same answer. But it's more general, you see, and in fact, there is more general than this even, but it's all too pre premature. And there's also, I've just been, uh, see this recent work of Shi Bing Zhen, where he has a spectral sequence. We have a spectral sequence too, but his is a spectral sequence of algebras. Now, I cannot vouch for his work because we are trying to understand his paper, right? But he claims the ring structure in a certain sense in the general case, right? Okay, so this example follows for free from the splitting theorem, right? So that's just an exceptional example. Now I want to discuss the general product structure. And to, to define the general product structure, I want to consider what I call partial diagonals, what we call partial diagonals. And you'll see the importance of the partial diagonals. So here we decompose I, any decomposition any decomposition. Now, it's a big, it's very important whether or not J intersects L. So, so there's, there's it's, it's, so the main, the main concern is, does 
J intersect L equal the empty set or not? This is, this is my main concern. Does J intersect L, is it the empty set or is it not the empty set? Okay? Now, if you give me J union L equals I, we define the partial diagonals from these smash products. Y hat I, which I define remember what y hat i is, I cleaned it off, y hat i is just y i 1 smash y i 2 smash y i k. i equals i 1 up to i k. So I define a map which goes from y i to y j. Now if i equals j equals l this is just the ordinary diagonal map, right? Now, in general, now up to a permutation of factors, right? To so modulo permutation of factors, modulo that, I will tell you what this map is. If, if L intersect J is not empty, then it is the diagonal map. It is the diagonal map. And if I and if I is in the complement of the intersection, it is the identity map. So there are only two maps in this partial diagonal. So so the partial diagonal, what they call it, partial hat J L I equals identity on Y I or ordinary diagonal. reduced diagonal. So it's either the identity or the ordinary diagonal. So I make this map and this its properties. The diagonal if you are on an intersection, the identity if you are not on an intersection. Do you want to put hat everywhere all the line? No, this is the, well, this is just the reduced diagonal map. See, there's no hat here. These, this has a hat. These are the factors. I'm talking about its restriction, what it does on the pieces, right? That's correct. This, I want to say what this does. So this is a smash product. Why I is this smash product? Oh, wait, wait. That's, that's why I'm asking if you have Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm s yes, it, it, it should be a hat. That's a typo. I'm sorry. That's a typo. I have to remember that it's a typo. Before I send you a PDF file, remind me, okay? And I'll, I'll say, I apologize, yes. Yeah, it's a typo. Thank you. Okay, so this is a very simple map, right? A simple map. It's a simple map. So it looks very complicated. This delta hat looks very complicated, but it's a simple map. Right? It's either the identity or the diagonal map. That's all. That's, that's my point. It's a very simple map. It has very confusing notation, but it's a simple map. Now, here's important commutative diagram. Now, along the top, there is no hat. And so this is the ordinary diagonal map right? Reduced diagonal. So, so by that, now there's no hat there, so by that I mean the following. So the upper map is y? Yeah, it would, it, would send, it, would, it would send, the upper map is this, if I have y1 cross y2, then the upper map, it takes me to y1 cross y2, smash y1 cross y2 and this is the reduced diagonal map okay now the the map down is the following so if I have y1 cross y2 the first thing I do is I project onto y let's suppose that i is 1 right so that would uh, let's let me give you an example of this so let's suppose m is 3 
and i is 1, 2. So the first thing is I project onto y1 cross y2, projection. So I'm defining this map on the left. And from this, I map down to y ones. this is another projection, y1 smash y2. So this composite is what I've called pi hat i. See? Pi hat i. First project in the Cartesian product and then take the smash. That's the left. And similarly, the right. And then for each decomposition, I'm claiming for every, de for every i, j and l, j union l equals i, for every such choice, this diagram commutes. That is my claim, right? That diagram commutes. For every fixed i, j and l, that diagram commutes. So, I've converted, so this is the relationship between the, di the top row is the ordinary diagonal map and the bottom is the partial diagonal maps in the smash product, right? Okay. Now, these restrict, you see, because these are what make up, that was the full product, see? This is the full Cartesian product at the top. It's the full Cartesian product and I'm claiming that restricts to the polyhedral product. So by restriction, by restriction we get this diagram. So all I've done is restrict everything now and I want to keep that diagram, right? I want to keep that diagram. I want to keep that diagram. So, so here is the diagram. The polyhedral product and I have the ordinary di reduced diagonal, reduced diagonal for the whole polyhedral product. The reduced diagonal goes into the smash product. No hats. And then I have the analog of the pi i hats, I hat i, and that goes down to the smash uh, the smash polyhedral product for k restricted to i. And then I have the partial diagonals here. So the delta JLIs. And they go into, that's the first one, KJ. Too much blackboard. Okay, and this is pi j uh, this diagram commutes. So this is the fundamental diagram. So this here, this implies the product structure in the cohomology of the polyhedral product. Yes, cup product product. Because the, the, no, the, just this. This is not saying. I'm not saying anything here. This is just topological spaces. This is the diagonal map, and the di all I'm saying is the diagonal map gives the product structure. So, like usually, I tend to think about the cup product defined by diagonal map. Diagonal map into a Cartesian product. That's correct, yeah. So this is it. Diagonal map into Cartesian. Smash product is the same. So the effectors to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's the same. So this, is, this gives me the cup product in reduced cohomology. Could you just show me the That's, I'm going to do restriction to the... So here is your y... This is the diagram here. Here y to the nth power to y is what? It's the full product. x1 to x n. Any y. Like, or it can be x1 times x1 to xn or... 
Just a uh, with, uh, with plus y by x. Yeah. Right. So, so when you're talking about x bar and a bar, this one should be x1, x1 times x2 times xn, right? I sort of want to agree to that, yes. Okay. Yes, sorry. But why, uh, yes, perhaps I should. It, I, perhaps I so this is a theorem, the next page is theorem. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's this fundamental picture here. Now I want to, okay, so this makes the ordinary cup product, cup product structure. But now I want to make a different product, a different product, and in the case of D2S1 and cohomology, these are the observations of Hochster and Baskarkov and Panov, but we are doing it geometrically, right, in the general case. We are doing this geometrically, not on cohomology, right? So I now want to make a product. Now once I have cohomology, I'll make the product, right? I need cohomology to make a product. You give me a class in J, you give me another class in L, and I defi define this star product to be the image in here, of this map. So you give me, where, d where was u? u is in j, so you give me u here and v here and in cohomology this gives me u star v. See? In cohomology. What is the, uh, the definition. You give me a class here in the cohomology of this you give me a class here in the cohomology of this, right? And I, I, I look at the uh, map in cohomology induced by this, okay? And that's the definition of star for the moment. Okay, so let's continue. Now, so this diagram seems very crucial, right? This this is the critical diagram, yeah. No, because we, we the, the, remember I said it's the stable splitting which gives the product, right? The stable splitting is into pieces which have the hat. See, the stable splitting says take no hat, suspend it, and you get a wedge of hats. No hat is expressed in terms of hats, right? But I still, I haven't, I haven't really seen the power of stable splitting yet. Not yet, no. Not yet, right. you, you're about to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and this is... We, we have this diagram without the hat and then replace the No, no. The, the important part of this diagram is this does not have hat, this does have hat. The usual, usual in the uh, product is what we know, but he says that that's uh, in, in the head space. I mean, Look, yeah, no, that, that, that's totally this, fine, this but I'm, I'm just asking that. Here's, what, here's all I've done, here is all I've done so far. I've observed that the blue box is the usual product in the cohomology of the polyhedral product. That's fact number one, right? And fact number two, the second thing that which I have done is I have defined this star using this diagram here. And using that piece there, I have defined this. So that's product. So that's product. that's all I've done. But the point is I haven't we haven't seen yet the power of this path and ways. Exactly. So I'm just asking that this diagram exists without path and replacing weights by a direct product. You mean removing hat here? And replace wedge by direct product. Um, what would be the projections then? What would be this projection? Remember I defined this in terms of yeah, uh, take a Cartesian product. Remember you don't have the vertex in I. You just forget it. Projection, usual projection. Yeah, yeah, that's I. right, right. So you have this pi I. Right? Yeah. In, in, in on the level of spaces, right? On the level before you take smash. 
Yeah. yeah. This diagram actually. So you mean you know I have a cross b, and then uh, a cross b cross c. So I'll project onto a cross c. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what do you want to put down here? Oh no 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 no! Like you stop there. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, get rid yeah. of hat and we have this diagram. Um. Uh. Yes. That would give you a, where where you have this. Well, it depends what you mean by this now. See, um, uh, y yes, yes, I could make such a diagram. Yes. Yeah, you could make such a diagram. No, it would be irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That that probably would commute. I have no problem with that. Okay. So, now here's a key point. The, if I come here, U tensor V in cohomology goes to U star V, and then in cohomology I go up to here. So I get pi hat uh, I of U star V gives me a class in here. I claim that that class is take U up to here, the image of U, take the image of V, and then take the ordinary cohomological cup product. So that's on the dot. Oh, sorry. On the right hand side, so this relates the star product to the cup product. That's, that's the result of commutativity of the diagram. That's the commutativity of the diagram. Yes, because this, this, this star operation is defined by this, this map. Yes, that's right. This is the star. So you can use yeah, that's the cup product. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is no, definitely the cup product. We agreed on that. So, so this is yeah. You see? Now, now I come to the critical point. Now, I take the direct, there is one of these smash moment angle part, uh, K sub i's for each i. I take the direct sum of those cohomology groups and I call it I call it script H and now I define a map I define a map from here to here right by on each piece KI it's given by this map here I define a map that is in fact the map which induces the stable splitting See, so now, so now, so this I is, a, is arbitrary subset so di if I, if or this uh, sub uh, or Well, first of all, script H, script H is the direct sum over all subsets I, but this is saying what it is restricted to one I, okay? Now, the proof of the decomposition theorem says that that is the map which gives the stable splitting. It gives an additive isomorphism. It's a geometric map. It gives the stable geometric splitting. And so the star, the star product, this star product, it makes script H an algebra. And the theorem is that the map from script H to here is a ring isomorphism. That's the theorem. It's a ring isomorphism. Okay, and so this, as I pointed out earlier, this extends the work by Hoxter, Franz, Panoff, lots of people, uh, to a general case in a geometric way. The, they, they, Baskarkov, Buchstaber, Panoff, they produce such a product in cohomology for D2S1. But it's not based in geometry. It's strictly a cohomology definition. Ours is based in geometry. Okay? And that has consequences. See, the fact that we make this product from geometry has more information than constructing it just from cohomology, as, as Buchstaber, Baskarkov, and Panov do in this case. Which claim are talking about? Sorry? This, this, that, this is the ring isomorphism. So, for that, that ring isomorphism was known at the cohomology level in the case of D2S1. Okay? 
that ring isomorphism, but it was not known that it came from geometry. Okay. It's a it's it's a group. That is a group. Yeah, but but the this makes it this makes it an algebra. The, the, my question is: does it, What about the summation of all i's, which forms the simplices, simplex of of k? K is a special complex, right? But remember, you go you're looking over all i in the simplex, but you're taking k sub i. See, the simplex is embedded in the, M, in the simplex with m vertices. It's embedded in there, right? So there's nothing to stop you taking any sub-simplex and intersecting it with k. Oh, I see. So that's a sub 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 complex. Okay. So we're always dealing with k all, sub i. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so continuing. Uh, now this is the case, if K is a full simplex, now Fred and I disagree on this, right? I have to tell you, Fred and I have not sorted out, we do not, Fred wants to take the empty simplicial complex, I want to take the full simplex, right? So, uh, so I don't know what the answer is. In my world, I take the full simplex, and then what this is saying, the, what this is saying is, we are computing we are computing the cohomology of A cross B, right, from this side. This side has the star product, this side. And we are claiming the star product on this side is isomorphic to the ordinary cup product in A cross B. That's what we're claiming for the full simplex, right? That's, so that's, a, that's just a special case, but it's important to note. Now we come to uh, applications of this applications of this uh, star product. In this case, the first application is, and there are many problems associated to this, if each xi ai is a suspension pair and not only that, but the inclusion, the inclusion suspension, U, suspension vi included in suspension ui is a suspension, is a suspension map. If that is true, then it is known, of course, that the reduced diagonal, that's why it's smash product here, is null homotopic. That uses the co-h uh, co space structure of the suspension to prove that this is null homotopic. And so that means, now when does this, remember when I constructed my partial diagonals, my, I asked, when does this happen? Well, remember most maps are the identity but they are not the identity where J intersect L is not empty. So in that case, this is null homotopic and these are smash products. So if J intersect L is not empty, all of these partial star products are zero. All star products are zero. Now, that, now this leads to a very important problem. Let me first of all say what the consequence of that is. So, it's always zero on this intersection. Now we spent a year trying to understand what happens for D1S0. Now many of you are expert on this. See this is if it's a suspension, right? But D1S0 is not a suspension pair. Not a suspension pair. Now D1S2 is D2S1, I mean, is a suspension pair. This is the suspension of D1, that's a suspension of X0, is a suspension pair. Now, we all know that, we all know that as a group, as a group, the cohomology of this is given by Tor, right? But not as a ring, not as a ring. In fact, I conjecture, here's a conjecture for you, you might like to it's conjecture. Um, this, is, uh, this is from my last talk. If I take Z, if I take Z uh, sorry, Z of K of J, D1 S0. Now remember, this, I told you last time, this was equal to ZK of D2S1. Now in here, 
there can be no star products because it's equal to this. There are no star products, right? So I conjecture this equals tor over the real, the real uh, polynomial ring as a ring. It's not equal to tor as a ring. It's equal to tor as a group. But I claim if you put k of j here, then, then it's tor as a ring. But that's a conjecture. Conjecture. Now, so a very hard questions arise. We spent a year trying to prove this. Can there be any star product? So his question, which has a solution now, but seems to... You have to be very careful when you compare our results to the people who are doing arrangements. Arrangements, you always have to read the arrangements people as the Alexander Joule of K. What we mean by K, arrangements people mean the Alexander Joule of K. You have to be very careful reading their papers, right? Now, so, so, so here's a question. It's hard to determine if there are non-zero star products in H star ZK D1 S naught uh, for J intersect L not empty. Now we spent a year making mistakes. Now Sam Gitler and Santiago Lopez de Medrano, they have constructed an example of this where the polytope comes from vertex cutting where they prove by very indirect means that there is, there is a non-zero product on an intersection. There is. Now the arrangements people seem to say that there isn't because the arrangements people have their own version of star product but we cannot be certain what's going on because it's too impossible to do a translation but most people think there's no contradiction, right? But any example, so if, if you take K equals the boundary of a pentagon then then the then then the com then the zk d1 s naught is a surface of genus five. So there is a symplectic basis, not in sense of symplectic geometry, but there is a symplectic basis here, right? And it's a very hard question which we have not been able to solve but a very good graduate student will be able to solve the problem because young mind is better than an old mind, right? It's a very hard question to solve. Can you choose the symplectic basis of a surface of genus 5 so that you can recognize there is a non-trivial product on an intersection? Right? That's question number one. And question number two is, what does, I'm getting, I'm digressing here, but these are very interesting questions that I would like to know the answer to. Let me tell you another very interesting, so that's a very interesting question. So in this, any, so the question here is, any not equal to zero star products? And there's only one case to look at, and that is this. Here, one, two, three, four, five. So here is L. This is L. And now I do J for you. This is J. And they intersect. Now do these two give a non-zero star product? Can you choose your symplectic? And moreover, so question two is, what is the role of the Strickland map? of the Strickland map. For the, uh, there's a reference to the Strickland map in Denim and Sushu because it uses the fact that D1S0 is a monoid though you have to choose the monoid structure makes a difference I think. Denim, Sushu of the Strickland map. Now the Strickland map will take you from a hexagon
uh, to a pentagon where I want to collapse this, right? So that's going to be 5 prime, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime. Now back here, so here is my, uh, what was my full subcomplex? Uh, one, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. So, one, three, four. That's that's going to be one, three, four. Same, right? And now the other one was two, four. Uh, sorry, two, uh, four, five. See, these intersect, but back here it was going to be, it's 2, 5, 6. So, 5. So you collapse this one, collapse, collapse this edge, that's the Strickland map, using the monoid structure on polyhedral product, on the real moment angle complex. Collapse. Now here, L, L intersect J is empty. Here, L prime intersect J prime is not empty. And my question is, can you, by analyzing the Strickland map, prove that this star product is not zero? We, we spent a very long time trying to prove this, but we're stupid. Um, some people, very young people, very smart, will be able to answer this question, right? Okay, okay. I'm just going to say two things very quickly. I'm sorry. Late off the press. We thought it was, this used to be called, in Nankai, I called this hot off the press, right? Hot off the press, but now it's late off the press. You can use that theorem about no products in a suspension to show the following facts about the rational homotopy. It's called elliptic if the rational homotopy groups of X are finite vector space. Hyper, rationally hyperbolic if not. So the previous result about suspensions having no star product and a result of Berglund gives a very easy proof of the only moment angle complexes which are rationally elliptic are those which are products of odd spheres and a disk. So this comes from the star product, right? The fact that in a suspension there are no star products on intersections. And I just mentioned to you a counterpoint that's a suspension pair, D1 is not, but Sam and Santiago have produced an example by corner cutting which has a non-trivial cut product in D1 S0. And it is this non-trivial star, I haven't analyzed it in detail, but it must be the non-exotic, non-trivial star product which says that, D, that, that um, the cohomology of D1 S0 does not equal Tor as a ring. So that must be the obstruction, the fact that there are non-trivial star products. But if you're in this case, because this is the complex moment angle manifold, a uh, space, then I claim that it's a conjecture that this is, is the Tor, that that is Tor as a ring, not just as a group. So this is Tor experts. Um, that's a good problem, I think. Okay, and, and now two spaces are stably wedge equivalent if they look the same stably. So stably wedge equivalent. Stably implies stably homotopy equivalent. Two spaces, the definition of stably wedge equivalent. And the theorem is from the star product, if you suspend an even, if you have two spaces and you suspend them like this and this, we say this is congruent to this if these agree mod 2. Now we need to suspend twice because the star product there is exchange of factors, right? And we don't want that to cause a sign problem. So theorem is that if these two spaces, they are always stably wedge equivalent and as ungraded rings, they must be isomorphic, as ungraded rings. Right, so if they're stably wedge equivalent, if the x, sorry, I beg your pardon, if I suspend the x and the a a different number of times mod 2, 
uh, sorry, if I, uh, the same number of times mod 2, right? Then they give me the same cohomology rings up to grading. The grading changes, right? So can't preserve grading. But they're isomorphic rings. Now that's a, I think that's a very strong result uh, 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 for some, uh, just from the star product. Um, now, the last result, which is quite surprising, you look at the pair which is cone on x, comma x, so that's D2S1, right? The wedge lemma, the wedge lemma tells us that the smash moment angle complex for cone on x, comma x involves the suspension of the realizations of the full subcomplexes with smash products of the xi, right? So, so in the special case where this is D1S0, this is just the Ki. So you see up there, that's the D1S0 part, right? So the corollary of this observation, it's very uh, interesting, which we generalizes, we find that this generalizes the partial diagonals for D1S0 are just given by these, and for the x's, it's just the ordinary diagonals. And so what do we conclude from the star product for cone on x, comma x? A very, a very interesting thing. So if we are in a, 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 an environment where we have a strong Kuhner theorem and any generalized cohomology theory, then this cohomology algebra for any k, it is a functor of just the cohomology of x and the real moment angle manifold. So this and this determine this. But in fact, there, more than this is true, right? But it's work in progress. Uh, more than this is true, but just in the case of cone on x, comma x, the ring structure is completely determined by D1S0. And in fact, it is for a suspension pair, but that's work in progress. So I'm not in a, in a position to talk about that. But So there are three applications of just the star product. So even though we cannot compute explicit ring structure with the star product, right, except in one case, um, we get a lot of qualitative theorems from it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I stayed too long.